Uh, now, what I wanted to do was do a demo on how to draw the human hand. And I think of it as a series of paddles, kind of like the human face is. So I work with ovals to describe most forms. And so what I've got here is the oval that could be a face if you think about that dividing line. But this is actually the halfway mark between the top and the bottom, which describes the row of knuckles where the hand folds, okay? Then what you want to do is you want to look at the, the wrist. And the, the, two, the wrist is almost like a two by four. You could almost think of it as a kind of squared off thing that, that juts into the hand. And uh, it has two little knobs from the radius and the ulna on either side. And actually what you can do is just whenever you get into trouble, you just check which one is lower and which one is higher. And that gives you an idea of it. So the next thing is if you look at the back of the hand that we're drawing this way, You'll see that the crease is here and there's webbing up here and if you turn it over, notice it has a, a different amount of joints and knuckles and they also kind of go slightly different directions because if you look at this, it kind of wiggles back and forth. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to give myself the archway that's the sort of pad of the hands and then a midpoint which is midway between here and here and then halfway between the end of the fingers is another sort of arc and they're upside down sort of smiley faces that describe the arcs that go. <clears throat> the thumb actually comes off of the back of the wrist so it's actually not really part of the paddle unit it comes off and it's got actually less knuckles in it than the other joints do and so you've got um, one bone going here one bone going there and then the thumb the, the end sort of joint of it, where the fingernail is, is sort of curving this way. So you can actually look where the knuckles are, where the two bones meet. It kind of creates a sort of swelling at any of those points that you can exaggerate a little bit. Probably that's a little too much. Um, and think of it as a series of sort of squared off things. So this thumb, when I think of that thumb, I think of it as a series of forms that run something like this. They're sort of squared off, and there tends to be some sort of padding a little bit in between. So this is the, the other, the back of the thumb there, which is another sort of uh, joint or squared off form. So now I've got this, this contour set off, and I've got the webbing established. So the next thing I do is I look for the longest finger, which is the index finger. Okay, and one of the things is if you get that index finger right, uh, not the index finger, I'm sorry, the middle finger, um, you pretty much can make sure that you've established where all the turns and movements are in the hand. So I always look for where are those divisions and what's the space between each one of these things. And it does vary for each person. So now what I'm going to do is where, the, where there's a joint, it swells out slightly and then it sort of pops back in. If you get that middle finger kind of done and realize that the end is actually sort of a pad that attaches to here and has a sort of swelling, that's the middle finger. Um, now the next thing to do is to look for where the, uh, the directions of the other fingers. Now this one is going to be the straightest one, but you're going to see that, for instance, the index finger actually zigzags a little bit. So the best thing to do, John Singer Sargent talked about this, is he said you never paint the fingers, you paint the space between the fingers, almost the negative space. Okay, And so that's what I'm kind of doing and I'm also paying attention to what I know, which is an ideal, which is I just want it to swell a little bit where each one of those joints are so that it kind of feels a little bit more hand-like. Alright, so again, a little swollen uh, where the knuckle is, a little swollen where the joint is there, okay, and then uh, it also zigs and zags a little bit, has a little pad to it, and even the negative space down here, if you look for that, help a little bit, and if you notice that it kind of goes like this finger, for instance, goes this direction, this direction, and this direction. There, there's always a zigzag in the body. You should, and so uh, rarely do you ever see things go one direction or another. So this is the, the pinky, and you can see it actually almost curves in like this. It has sort of like this almost uh, zigzag railroad kind of thing going on. And here's the, the middle of the hand. And 
sort of the where the carpal uh, bones are. Okay, go down. Uh, I think this is the ulna bone. There's a now there's a, a series of muscles that connect from here to here that that cause the palm muscle. In this hand, it's not as evidenced, um, but this kind of gives you a good idea of where things look. And so now that I have this kind of laid out, I'm using this. Um, Lithograph, lithograph pencil, it's a litho crayon, and they're slightly water soluble. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to shade this really quickly uh, to show you how the values kind of lay on. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a little bit of a uh, black watercolor, and I'm just going to wash in, oh, that's a little dark, let me get that off of there. I'm just going to wash in where the big shadowy planes are so that I get a sense of the volumes of the hands. So for instance, that would be kind of a little bit like this on this. You see how those sort of are a plane? And then there's a, a sort of another plane here and a flattened plane that goes up this way, a little bit of shadowing, a little bit of uh, shadowing on the cushion. The fingertips are slightly rounded. Don't want to get too carried away because I want to show you the other part of the hand. So, now the back of the hand is a, um, a slightly different form, and I have rehearsed this once or twice to kind of show you what I'm thinking about. And just to speed it up a little bit, I'm going to work on this one so that I can go quickly. So the first thing that I have done is I have the paddle laid out. I also have the knuckles across the back. What I want you to notice is that the webbing's up here. This is where that, that line of knuckles is, and that the webbing is much further up, and then there's a series of joints. So the next thing that I'm going to do is I have this, this set of knuckles. I've got the thumb coming off the back here. And one of the, th the next thing I do, just because I'm very systematic about it, is <clears throat> the middle finger is probably the <laughs> most important finger in terms of establishing um, which direction the hand is going because it's the center of the hand. So what I did was I, on the back of the hand, that knuckle is actually a kind of circle. And so I just sort of caricature it a little bit for myself to remind myself that somewhere at those joints they need to kind of do some ins and outs and a little bit of wiggle waggle. So now I've got that middle finger indicated in and I'm going to look at the space between the, um, the, the fingers and try to work more or less from the negative space on the back of the hand. Okay, there's the nail bed at the tip there. Okay, and actually if you look at fingers they turn up at the very tip. See how it does that? So this hand is actually flaring up slightly. Okay. Uh, same thing with this one, with this finger. You can see a little overlap towards this knuckle in the back. And this is um, that, that sort of swollen knuckle uh, of the pinky, and then there's kind of goes in as a, as a single unit and then curves back out, right? And then zigzags the other direction slightly. So I'm exaggerating those things, but the, you know, I think that they kind of help to make the, it look a little bit more real. There are also a series of knuckles on the back of the fingers, and if you kind of just throw those in a little bit, it gives you some of the lines where the center of the knuckles and then there's actually ligaments that run from the back of your hand across the top of those knuckles and cause some raised kinds of things. This is the muscle that's, there's a muscle on the hand right here that you can just see the outline of on the back. And there is one of the knuckles from your wrist. I'm not using proper terms, I'm sorry. I'm gonna look at the negative space between the thumb and that index finger. And then I'm gonna look at the negative space between the index finger and the middle finger. And look at the directions that the hands are going or the fingers are going. Sorry, I live in a no uh, noisy neighborhood.
Now, just look for those ribbons that are running back towards the wrist, and then there's a series of ligaments that sort of wrap, and they run under and into that, so you can't really see. There's a ligament that's running across the back like a tape onto the thumb there, and there's that knuckle, and you can just see a little bit of that. Now, the muscle that is your palm muscle actually projects through the two bones if you feel it. And so this is going to be slightly puffier and a little bit of a rounded form here. <clears throat> and now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to shade it a little bit for you so you get a sense of where the volumes are. So this is actually pretty much of a big flat plane with a couple of the tendons shooting through the back. And then there's um, this ligament flattens things out, but then you can see where the bone is, is showing through on the back of the wrist. You can actually see that this is a, a single sort of segment and that it twists a little bit. So you have to think of these things a little bit as geometric forms. Since this is tilting up, there's the knuckle. There's the shade between the fingers. Pretty much described most of the volumes of the hand and uh, where a lot of the ligaments are pretty quickly. Um, nice thing about watercolor sometimes is that as it um, dries it gets a little bit lighter so it kind of blocks I suppose some of your you know my heavy-handedness <laughs> uh, not to be too punny. I'm just using a, a cheap uh, sort of sketchbook paper that I got from uh, Blick online um, that is uh, a paper that I'm going to use with my students when I'm teaching this semester. Okay. That might be a little bit dark. I'll probably lighten that up just by a little dab. And there you have the front and the back of the hand um, using the system that uh, of ovals. And you can see that, you know, you can get pretty consistent results <laughs> doing this stuff if you practice a lot. Okay? Thanks for watching.